Let's start this video by taking a look at this small dancing flame candle that we're about to take apart. This is the simplest little unit I've ever seen, and it came from Hardy's Hardware in um, Cathcart Road, Glasgow. So now we've seen it operating, let's open it up. So looking closer, this is the classic dancing flame effect. It's got this moving flame on a support wire with a slight dip near the back so it centres um, by gravity just near the back of the candle. In front lighting it is an LED and from the lurid yellow I thought this was going to be a standard gallium arsenide type yellow LED but it's actually a phosphor LED which means they could have actually used a nice natural warm white for this but they haven't. The power is an absolutely miserable set of three LR44 style alkaline button cells and they um, basically just power everything. Well, as you'd expect, and they're not really going to last that long. Also, do you see it glitching there? Sometimes it does that. It just randomly glitches until it stabilises. Seems the circuitry is very minimalistic. Let's pop the bottom off it. And this is just pressed in. And once you've got the bottom off that, you can then press the top out and it just pops out to reveal the module. And to be honest, this is worth getting just the module alone. However, the module has a little circuit board in here with the coil underneath for deflecting the flame magnetically. And then it's got the LED going up here. And if we prise this open, if I can prise this open, let me grab a pair of pliers and we'll just stick it in here and try prising this apart. It is just pushed together. It's not glued in any way. This is good. So here we have the circuit board with the LED, and we'll take a closer look at that, and I'll draw you the schematic. Not there's much a schematic. And then here's the wire, which is just basically, it looks like a bent staple. Uh, it is basically just um, placed into two little holes in this casing with that uh, recess at the back. So it really does look a bit, oh, I've just dropped it. It does look just like a staple. You could possibly, if you're a 3D printing one, you could actually use a staple for that, or just a bit of bent wire. The flame itself is a little counterbalance weight, it's kind of well balanced, and then it's got a neodymium iron boron magnet in the mid bottom, in the middle, uh, to be deflected by this tiny little coil here. The circuit board is not that exciting. It has the lurid yellow LED, that's the first thing that I'd change in this, is uh, I'd put in a more golden warm white one that map closely match candle colour. And then it's got a little blob chip and it's got a coil. Let me show you the schematic for this. So I'll move that stuff out the way and bring in the schematic. This is take two. I really messed up take one. By the time I'd opened it, I thought, well, you might as well just uh, continue on from where I left off. So here are the button cells. There's the switch. And then the LED is clamped right across the button cells, so it's relying on their internal impedance to limit the current. So that ends up about 3 volts here. That's why, if I turn this on, you may see, if I point this at the table, you may see it dips rhythmically. I don't know if that is showing. Is the dipping showing? But um, what's happening is that the, the capped 3 volt supply, I mean, to be honest, I'd want to put a resistor in line with this LED, um, particularly if you decide to convert this to, say, a USB power supply. Uh, but the supply then powers the blob chip, just basically a little resin blob over a chip bonded directly onto the circuit board. And there is a 370 ohm coil and roughly, a, this is just visually assessing from the dipping of the LED, I think it energises the coil one in four, so that basically for a count of four, it's energised for one and then off for two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it just keeps dipping it like that. It may be one in eight, but I'm not sure. It's going to be a binary number because this thing will have an oscillator in it and then just a binary counter and then some logic. And the fact that uh, it sort of glitched initially when I turned it on there suggests that the logic is not initially stable, but once it's stabilised, it will get into that rhythm of one in four. And that is it. So it's a very simple thing. The best bit of this is this module because it does let you customise it to your own requirements. And uh, once you've done that, uh, you can have your own your choice of colour and uh, perhaps even adjust the... By putting a resistor here, you could also adjust the um, 
force with which, which the flame was detected, you could tame it up or down. I'm not sure what the maximum voltage of this will be. Because if you were to supply this with a, a USB power supply um, and then put a resistor in series the LED, it means the voltage up there would be higher. I'm not sure what this will be rated for. Maybe it is capped at 3 volts by design or maybe it would accommodate that higher voltage. You could always add a diode or two in, in series just to bring the voltage down. But that is it. It's a very simple, nice little unit. It was very cheap. Very cheap indeed. It was only about £2. Um, but it is, you know, it just needs these improvements done because at the moment it's that classic lurid yellow, even though they've used the phosphor LED and could have used any other colour. It just seems that they've stabilised on thinking for some reason electronic candles should be bright yellow. But there we have it. The uh, cheapest dancing flame LED candle ever. It's actually pretty neat.